All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Wednesday evening business, going right into the holidays. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in, wipe your feet on the rug, throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up some NYC Sour Diesel, sunshine for your soul, even in the wintertime. First of all, I want to salute to Luigi Mealy, LTC Nutrition and Performance. Salute to you, sir, and thank you for being a sponsor for today's video. This next story coming by the way of the National Post by Adrian Humphreys. Salute to you, sir. Mafia underboss gets day parole despite objections of prison authorities. The Correctional Service of Canada was concerned by Domenico Violi's authority and control over other inmates. And you know what I say, like many other people say on this platform, let's free the Violi brothers. An imprisoned Canadian who claimed he was the second in command of a New York mafia family has been released on day parole over the objections of the prison where he appeared to have authority and control over inmates despite this being his first time behind bars. Dominico Violi, 55 of Hamilton, Ontario, was granted day parole for a six-month test period. At his trial in 2018, Violi pled guilty to drug trafficking and possession of property obtained by crime in return for criminal organization charges against him being dropped. He was sentenced to six years, four months, and 21 days. Violi was released into a halfway house on day parole earlier this month, but the Parole Board of Canada denied him full parole and refused his request to live at home with his wife. Violi's release was opposed by the Correctional Service of Canada, or the CSC. The prison system was concerned over Violi's association and his apparent influence behind bars. The prison intercepted several suspicious money orders last year sent to different inmates inside the facility where Violi was also housed, the parole board heard. An investigation revealed that all of the money orders were bought by the same person who was described as a known contact of Violi's but who was not publicly identified. Quote, it was determined the funds did not meet policy requirements and the money orders were seized for forfeiture. Offenders are not permitted to give money to other offenders, the board said of the prison's report. The board also heard earlier this year a CSC security intelligence officer reported that Violi was using his authority and control to get items such as food from inmates and other housing units. Another incident noted Violi's close association with another offender who was criminally charged and subject to ongoing investigation. Prison officials also told the board that Violi was involuntarily transferred to a medium security prison in July of 2019 when police alerted CSC his safety might be at risk. Violi objected to his prison transfer in 2019, saying police claimed his life may be in danger but didn't contact him or his family. The parole board said police also said he was involved in traditional organized crime, which is the federal government's code word for the mafia. Violi's family has been an important part of the mafia history for generations. His father was Montreal Mafia boss Paolo Violi, who was killed in 1978 by members of the rival Rizzuto clan. His grandfather was former Ontario Mafia chieftain Giacomo Lupino. In 2017, Police wiretaps caught Violi boasting of making mafia history of his own, according to documents filed in court. Violi was caught in an unusual police probe featuring a made member of a New York City mafia organization, the Bonanno family, who started working as an agent for both American and Canadian law enforcement. A disgracia! When Violi met with the mobster turned informant, Violi told the American he had been made the underboss of the mafia family based in Buffalo, New York. According to court documents, underboss is the second highest position in a mafia family. If true, he would be the only person in Canada to ever have been named to one of the top leadership positions in any U.S.-based mafia clan. Because criminal organization charges were dropped with Violi's plea bargain, the veracity of the wiretap were never tested in court and their role in deciding his parole eligibility was muted. So I guess it was kind of smart that he took the plea. He successfully appealed his previous parole rejection because parole board members asked him about mob ties. This time, parole board members focused on information from prison records and Violi's eight written submissions. The board said that despite the prison's concern over the behind bars incidents, Violi faced no institutional charges of discipline. Violi 
Violi was well behaved otherwise and worked diligently as a cleaner. Violi said he planned to abide by any release conditions and to spend his time with his family and re-engaging with his flooring business, his church, volunteering, and recreational activities. He told the board his drug trafficking started with introducing a buyer to a seller and he only became directly involved when he was owed money and sought to be repaid from drug profits. Quote, of concern, you continue to express distorted thinking by holding on to your belief that you were simply helping others, the parole board said. Violi, however, said he was a changed man. Being in prison, he told the board, had its desired effect. It made him think more about the consequences of his actions. Behind bars, he said, he explained firsthand the devastating impact of drugs on vulnerable people. He, uh, on vulnerable people. He has health concerns needing treatment and wanted to live at home with his wife or failing that at his mother's house, he told the board. The board didn't think this was a good idea because before his arrest, he was meeting with drug traffickers and conducting drug deals at his house. That's a no-no. You don't shit where you eat. The board said staying at home was premature. Deciding day parole to a community residential facility was a safer bet and gave him six months to prove his reliability. The board imposed two special conditions to provide documented financial information and not to associate or communicate with anyone he knows or has reason to believe is involved in crime. So I'm going to say, you know what? Salute to this judge. Kudos to Dominico. Okay, he got out. He's in a halfway house. Listen, you're halfway there. Six months, you prove to them, you keep your nose clean, you mind your business, you dot your I's and you cross your T's and you go home to your wife. And that's it. And what do I say about everybody that goes home? You stay off the phone. You stay off the emails. You stay off the internet. I want to first of all thank Oddman Rush for sending me this article. I want to thank Luigi Mealy for sponsoring this video i want to thank adrian humphreys from the national post for this article and you know that the link to the article will be in the description box as usual mob story season three big rich queens happy holidays let me know what you're smoking on let me know what city you're smoking in salute